You may now begin your presentation. Good afternoon. I'm Brittany Fiedler, presentation team captain and member of Texas State Scythe for three years. My name is Lauren Peterson, Scythe officer and volunteer for one year. Hello, I'm William Payne, brand new Scythe member. Hi, I'm Michael Huddleston, the old guy on the team. My name is Matthew Batten, also a brand new Scythe member. My name is Ryan Bodwin, Vice President of Free Enterprise. Changing the world begins with the creation of a plan. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Texas State University Psych Team presentation. Blueprints provide guidelines. Foundations provide stability. Frameworks provide structure. But people are the heart and soul behind providing opportunity. For the 2007-2008 Psych year, we took guidelines, stability, structure, and heart and soul to build a future and change the world. Judges, for your convenience, let us tell you how our presentation is set up. We invite you to turn your judging sheets over to Criterion 6, where we will begin our presentation and continue throughout the criteria. We chose to set up our presentation in this way because we felt it would be the natural way to tell you the story of our team. This will allow you to see how our team functions and serves as a foundation for our project development and ultimate goal of building a future for ourselves and others. Texas State University, San Marcos, 28,000 strong, is located in the heart of Central Texas and situated directly between Austin and San Antonio. 30% of the San Marcos population is non-English speaking and below the poverty level, so Texas State SIFE reached out to produce change within our community and beyond. Our overall mission? To create economic opportunity for others by focusing on very current and relevant educational and entrepreneurial projects. Our team's sustainability goal? To keep in place a pattern for team and project sustainability. Our team's sustainability objectives? To recruit 100 students per year and retain a core group of 40 volunteer officers. Annually review our legacy projects, keep the best, cost the rest, and come up with new and exciting ways to change the world. Why has our team been sustainable since 1994? We constantly update our master plan for team and project sustainability. Like any construction project, we started with our blueprint. We decided our focus would be both educational and entrepreneurial. Our foundation is based on a 30-member strong business advisory board and permanent funding from the university. Years of hard work and a strong track record built that foundation. Take a look at our board. From the media to young entrepreneurs to established corporate executives, we have a potpourri of top talent at our disposal. Budgets are next, and they're critical. Many of our projects only require creativity and a time commitment, while our larger projects require financial support. So we decided to take $27,000 from our entrepreneurial revenues, sponsorships, life-changing projects, the beauty of success is that it can allow you to give back. The framework of Texas State SIFE is set up like this. First, SIFE is offered as a class, and then volunteers serve for years and years. Remember me? Three years running. SIFE for life. This system allows for both new excitement and focused dedication and continuity. The best of both worlds. For the past 13 years, our self-replacement policy has given us a continual supply of proven talent. We pick our own successors. New students go online to find a rich database of over 80 projects. We have many legacy projects and develop new ones every year to meet the needs of our audiences. Helping us is a strong network of 21 partnering organizations that allow us to reach different demographics. Our media presence is ensured by both our own radio program, Cash, and network television coverage from our loyal board member, Danny Baker, general manager of Fox 7 News. Our results. We have competed at regionals since 1994, over 14 years, and have competed at nationals and entered all special competitions since 1997. Thanks to the efforts of Texas State SIFE alumni, over 800 strong, our blueprint for sustainability has been extremely effective. On to ethics. Two of the most recognizable men in the world, Microsoft mogul Bill Gates and the famous Oracle of Omaha, Mr. Warren Buffett agree that the success of any business is built on integrity and a strong ethical foundation. The cost to companies of unethical behavior is staggering. Stock prices decline, company reputations suffer, and job losses occur, having a negative impact on the workforce. There is a correlation between ethical behavior and profitability. 
From our ethical library, we have chosen to highlight two projects, our Legacy Ethical Series and our brand new Project Green Earth. For our first ethical project, our goal was to continue expanding our popular ethical legacy projects. Our objective, to remind senior executives of the importance of ethical behavior. One of our most popular and successful legacy projects has been our four-part ethical series, beginning with the irrepressible Ethical Eddie, totally created by Texas State Science. Ethical Eddie is a copyrighted children's book with ethical dilemmas dealing with lying, cheating, stealing, mistreating others, and not following the rules. Distributed around the world, Eddie has been to 10 countries, over 100 school districts in the United States, and our latest success story, Eddie went pro. He was in the hands of every bat boy and every bat girl at the Houston Astros opening day. Brand extensions of Ethical Eddie include Ethical Emma, an interactive computer program for high school students, and Ethical Elizabeth, a little black book for young executives. With our ethical series, we wanted to reach all age groups. So next, we went straight to the top. Remember our statistic on declining stock prices, ruined reputations, and job losses? Let's help prevent those statistics by reaching senior executives. Enter Ethical Eduardo, a web-based training module that deals with the original five ethical issues. Here we go again. Lying, cheating, stealing, mistreating others, and not following the rules. What does the training entail? It starts with a fictitious scenario requiring critical thinking and judgment. Executives are given three choices, and each decision is followed by the consequences of their actions and repercussions on them, their families, their companies, and their communities. Next is a real life in the news scenario to reinforce the reality of unethical decisions. For example, at the end of our line section, we review the infamous Enron case. Each section includes a quiz to test knowledge gain and after the training is completed, a survey is distributed for feedback to quantify effectiveness. Who did we train? Ethical Eduardo for senior executives went to large companies such as Advanced Solution International all the way down to smaller businesses. 125 ASI senior executives across the nation took our training. The beauty of this project, it is web-based, highly scalable, and had a true impact on senior executives. Plus, it is 100% homegrown by Texas State. All in all, I was, was very impressed. Um, I think ethics are something that have affected the business world more so in the last five years than probably ever before. Um, it was encouraging to see the level of ethics and the insight that was coming from the, a college level uh, student. I think if, if this level of, of education is being taught today, it will make my life a lot easier in the next 10 or 15 years as we're beginning to hire and train and promote mid to upper level management. Overall results. We did a successful brand extension of our legacy project and we trained over 740 executives in 26 companies with our ethical training module for senior executives. 18 ciphers working a total of 540 hours. Let's move on to our second ethical project, Project Green Earth, brand new this year. What has 400,000 pounds of mercury 1.2 million pounds of hexavalent chromium, 2 million pounds of cadmium, and 1.2 billion pounds of lead, computer waste in landfills. Our goal? To raise awareness of environmental dangers and their impact on our world. Our objective? To reach every SIFE team on the planet. 1,800 in all with our project Green Earth. To increase awareness about the dangers of high-tech trash on our environment, Texas State SIFE partnered with Dell to participate in a global effort of going green. We all know that lead and mercury can be dangerous to the environment, but did you even know that cadmium and hexavalent chromium existed? Who knows what that does to the environment? To create the biggest impact, we decided to educate the future leaders of our world. With our $10,000 Dell sponsorship, we put together a package that contained green facts and an environmental quiz that we sent out to every SIFE team on the planet. We use the green facts to raise awareness among the site teams and encourage them to make a difference in their communities. As for the quiz, we held a contest in which each site team in the world was allowed to enter. Teams that answered all questions correctly were entered into a drawing. We selected two teams from the U.S. and two internationally. Congratulations to teams from Florida, Mississippi, Thailand, and the Netherlands for winning a brand new Dell computer to use for their site teams. To create an even bigger impact, Texas State SIFE held a global Going Green Day where all 28,000 students across campus were encouraged to recycle their old computers. According to the US EPA, 30 to 40 million PCs will be ready for end-of-life management in the next few years. 
So we reached out to Scythe teams across the world and invited them to join us in a massive recycling campaign to create a cleaner planet. Thanks to Central Texas College for bringing two truckloads of high-tech trash to our first annual Green Earth Day. Overall results, we educated over 3,600 people, recycled several hundred computers, and raised awareness about the ethical treatment of the environment in Scythe schools across the world. Project Green Earth, mission accomplished. On to financial literacy. With sustainability as our foundation and ethics as our framework, financial literacy now becomes the door to opportunity. For many people, this means owning their own home. But about 6 million people in the U.S. have borrowed 100% of the value of a house at the top of a housing market that has fallen sharply. Who hasn't heard about the subprime mortgage debacle? Of our 11 financial literacy projects, we have chosen to highlight Ask Sue's. Our goal, to present nine legacy and two new and timely projects to improve financial literacy. Our objectives, to help individuals learn about money management and mortgages, saving and investing, and for entrepreneurs, where to find that all-important startup cash. In response to the current subprime mortgage situation, we taught our popular legacy project, Ask Sue's. We sent one of our very own SIFE officers to diverse groups in a blonde wig with the same format of the Susie Orman Show. The Game Show Project capitalized on the popularity of current financial self-help television programming to address numerous literacy topics in a playful fashion. For our entry into the HSBC Financial Literacy Competition, the Ask Sue's Project consisted of a series of 50 questions on credit scoring, credit card usage, saving and investing, and money management. Then the participants asked our very own Sue's the question. We focused our questions on current topics. What are three major credit rating agencies? How can you become financially independent without having a large salary? And very much in the news, what effects can adjustable interest rates have on your monthly mortgage payments? Three key principles that we taught were, number one, if payments are delinquent, contact your lender immediately. Number two, discuss causes of delinquent payments. And number three, work out a repayment plan to save your credit and your home. Nobody wins in a property foreclosure. Results, we reached four diverse audiences, even Sweden, and taught a Spanish translation to local immigrants. There was an 86% increase in knowledge. We also connected people with credit counselors. Media for this project included print and radio exposure on our own cash radio show. Overall, our financial literacy projects reached 2,575 people, and we completed 32 project sessions, resulting in an 80% increase in knowledge. Since our signature project this year covers Criterion 3, Helping Entrepreneurs Succeed, and Criterion 1, Understanding Free Market Economics, we are combining that project description as the final portion of our presentation. So we will proceed now from Criterion 4 to Criterion 2. On to success skills. The Bureau of Labor Statistics states that 60% of all future jobs require skills that only 20% of the current workers possess. What are these skills? They are endless, the nuts and bolts of daily success. Of our 12 success skill projects, we've chosen to highlight Interview Express. Our goal? to improve workforce readiness for 1,000 people, students, older workers, disadvantaged youth, and the unemployed. Our objective, to improve skills for those who choose to work for others or who want to become entrepreneurs in the global marketplace. Brand new this year, Interview Express was a two-day event with 10 stations, each manned by one corporate executive, one SIFE officer, and one new SIFE student. Come on in. Naturally, we taught all the workforce readiness tips interview and resume help, appropriate workforce attire, and proper behavior. But the unique part of this concept, we taught the importance of proper business introductions and the differences in business card presentations around the globe. This is timely and relevant because the big four emerging markets are becoming prominent global players. Let's take a look. Uh, Adam came with dog. In Asia, the proper way to exchange business cards is to hold the card with two hands and present it immediately with the four language side facing up. Our next most popular station was how to make proper business introductions. Mr. Bossman, may I present my colleague, Matthew Batten. The key point is that the junior business person is introduced to the more senior business person. Results. We are proud to say that Interview Express helped four different groups of over 1,000 people students, older workers, disadvantaged youth, and the unemployed. But learning skills are useless without connections to career opportunities. Over a period of 10 years, we've developed a database of over 200 companies offering career choices. 100 ciphers involved, 
working a total of over 2,000 hours. I really felt like Interview Express was really beneficial um, with the resume and interview tips to the how to dress station and being able to talk with Texas State Scythe members and also business representatives. For example, I spoke with Enterprise Rent-A-Car and they really gave me the confidence that I needed when going on interviews. Um, a week later I had an interview and I actually landed a summer internship. Business Week recently noted the Big Four, also known as BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, and China, have attracted a great deal of attention lately. But other emerging markets are also undergoing an economic renaissance, specifically Mexico. That is why of our seven entrepreneurial and market economics projects, we have chosen to highlight Operation Build a Future, covering both criteria one and three. Our goal? To create a long-term sustainable business model in one of the top 10 emerging world markets. Our objectives? To build a business from scratch, teach ownership principles, train the employees in supply chain management, gain an understanding of international trade, and then get out of the way. Introducing Operation Build a Future. We had the idea, but needed the location. 15 miles south of Juarez, Mexico, is a Tarahumara Indian community known simply as Kilometer 33. It's an area of extreme poverty, hopelessness, and despair. Many of the homes are made from old school buses, pallets, or other improvised building materials. There is no running water, and electricity is scarce. Many of the children are left to fend for themselves because their parents are either working long hours at the Maquiladora plants or begging at the International Bridge. Many of these children are severely neglected and are victims of physical, emotional, or sexual abuse. This Native American community needed hope. Enter Lydia Robles, a Texas State Scythe alumna in El Paso, Texas. She partnered with us and Kingdom Flight, a humanitarian organization. All of us wanted to improve the conditions for the Native Americans, so Texas State Scythe decided to take money from our own entrepreneurial operations and help them build a future. We felt the best way to do this was to create a strong business plan and help them learn how to run their own business by building a store. Step one, get funds and begin construction. Initially, we used multiple streams of income for our $8,000 startup capital investment. The major sources were primarily our Texas-based stores' ongoing profits, supplemented by grants, sponsorships, and prize money. The store was on its way, but as any of you who have ever built a home know, your ideas just get bigger, and ours did too. So naturally, we needed more money. So what's next? Step two, secure vendors. We contacted Frito-Lay, Campbell's, Nestle, Dell Labs, and just about every company you've ever heard of. Our original plan was to get them to supply a few boxes of products to get initial inventory. And guess what happened? The corporate response was overwhelming. Our biggest success story is that we secured HEB, one of the nation's largest independently owned food retailers with stores throughout Texas and Mexico as a sponsor. They provided racks to hold products, cold cases, and shelving. With sponsorships totaling over $25,000, Nestle, Dell Labs, HEV, and several other companies have become long-term vendors contributing to our goal of creating a sustainable business model. But the real trick is having effective supply chain management over the long haul. We rely on two sources of inventory. National vendors provide the majority of our products. Sam's Club, for example, is only five miles from our store and is a major source of toiletries and other non-perishable items. And local vendors provide fresh produce daily. Step three, set up international distribution. We had inventory, but the five stumbling blocks were we needed a warehouse for goods, a U.S. and Mexican brokerage, transportation, and an import permit. As many of you know, Juarez, Mexico is the center of Maquiladora operations where many products sold all over the world are manufactured. In order for companies to manufacture in Mexico, they must receive what is called a Maquiladora permit. Because we are not manufacturing anything, we don't qualify for a Maquiladora permit. So our only other option was a charitable organization's import-export permit. To accomplish this, we needed a customs broker. Enter Robles International, the leading provider of logistic services located in Santa Teresa, New Mexico, only 30 minutes from our store location. Robles International was the answer to all five of our original stumbling blocks. Although there are roadblocks during the construction process, the building was able to serve other purposes until completed. Annually, an outreach program provides free medical care for Kilometer 33. 
but was forced to operate out of tents in 30 to 40 degree weather. Our store provided the families with a warm facility to receive health care. We are glad our store is able to serve multiple purposes to help better the conditions for this community. Step four, educate future owner Armando Vasquez about the free market, financial literacy, and ethics, all necessary to succeed. We taught him cash flow statements, inventory control, and how to be a great boss. Giving people the chance to succeed in a free enterprise market-based economy is a joy to behold. It was indeed a rewarding experience to see Armando's natural talents blossom. My name is Armando Vasquez, and I am very happy to be the owner of the Scythe Market. Finally, step five, open the doors. Bienvenido un Esperanza Mercado Cife. Welcome One Hope Scythe Market. After spending $27,000 and hundreds of hours work, the store was open. Families now have a convenient location to shop. Children no longer have to walk long distances, and parents can better provide for their families. The bigger picture is that Armando Vasquez and his family have a sustainable business model that can provide economic opportunity for years to come. Our results, it's all in the numbers. We have an average monthly gross revenue of $2,400 with a profit margin of 9%, and our inventory turnover rate varies by product category with produce moving quickly. Another benefit of Operation Build a Future, a portion of the profits from the store are going toward building a battered women's shelter for the community. Our future plans to keep profits rolling in and to use this business model as a prototype for business expansion. After only eight short months, we built a store from ground up, opened the doors, and are generating profits. It has been a truly rewarding experience to see our ideas become reality and to see lives both theirs and ours actually change. The beauty of this project is that it allowed us to impact every part of their lives, from business principles to personal growth. We would love to tell you about our 34 other projects we worked on this year, so please ask us in our question and answer period. And now for our wrap up. Over 900 project sessions completed, an 89% increase in knowledge, over 33,000 people reached, 352 students involved, 47 countries reached, four projects available in two or more languages, three projects scalable with an international presence through video conferencing, 15 sponsoring companies contributing to a record high of over $31,000, newspaper, radio, television, electronic coverage, and 100% participation by our business advisory board. Plus, all projects were 100% homegrown by Texas State Scythe. Overall, while building a future, lives changed at every level. Ours, our support team, and our community. Our blueprint created a guideline. Our foundation created stability. Our framework created structure. But the heart and soul of our people created opportunity. My name is Lydia Robles from Robles International. I have been a Texas State Scythe student, an officer, an executive, an advisory board member, and now an entrepreneur. And at every level, my life has been changed by my involvement in Scythe and by giving back to others. At this time, we will now entertain any questions you may have for the Texas State University Scythe team. Thank you, Texas State University San Marcos. We will now begin the Q&A period. Judges? Thank you so much. Yes, I am interested in your 34 other projects, but one of the things I really would like you to answer now is to tell us a little bit more about the health care that you were able to provide, I think quite ingeniously while you awaited the completion of your project. I'll take that question. What happens is um, there's a nonprofit organization that um, finds free medical care for this community and they come in once a year to give the kids medicine, make sure they're up to date on their shots and so forth and anybody who's sick can talk to the doctors. And what normally happens is they set up tents and it's, you know, during the winter time so it's around 30 to 40 degree weather. So when we heard from the Kingdom Flight nonprofit organization, they said we used your store and everybody was warm. So we were so excited that it was serving more purposes than we even expected. So we were really excited about that. Uh, first off, you guys did a great job. Um, 
have a question about the um, the, re the recycled uh, effort that you guys put together. How did you judge the winners that you gave prizes to? That's an excellent question. We it sent around when we sent the first package. We sent an environmental quiz along with facts for, to raise awareness about the problems with high tech trash in our environment, and we invited the teams to take the quiz and email it or fax it back to us and we would enter them into a drawing. And the teams that got all of the questions correctly on the quiz were entered into a drawing and we selected the teams. It was really exciting actually, Dell representatives at our Green Earth Day selected the teams and we, t we just did a drawing. And so if you got the questions right, you got entered into the drawing. The 86% uh, increase in knowledge, um, could you provide a little bit more detail on how did you measure that and how did you come up with that, that number? All of our product, all of our projects, what we do is before we teach anything, we go and we give what we call a pretest. And it has information that we are hoping that our audience learns during our, pro our teaching of the project. So we give this, they take the, uh, the, they answer the questions, and then they pass back those answers. We spend our time with uh, the participants, we teach them, and then once we're, we're finished, we hand out our post test. We take those answers and then we compare so we can give a statistical analysis of how well we're doing of teaching the, pro the projects and how well the people are receiving the information. How did you derive the income that you spent during the year? That's a great question. We started, um, we started the year with our revenue that we had carried, I mean our um, retained earnings from the years previously. A lot of our income came from our sponsorships. We had some from prize money from last year. And then we got, um, we have reoccurring grants that we've worked on for over 11 years. So that's the majority of our income. Of all the projects that you did, can you share maybe some of the biggest challenges you had and hurdles you overcame, or maybe a, something that wasn't ex as successful as you thought it would be when you started out, and how you worked as a team to kind of overcome that? I'd like to answer that question. Um, our project Green Earth was quite a massive undertaking. It took a consolidated effort from the entire team to go and reach every SIVE team on the planet. One of the hurdles that we ran into was it's, ex it's actually extremely difficult to get all the team's information. So we had to really work to find contacts at the school. We would send out uh, packets, but then they'd get returned to us because they didn't have the right person's name on them. So that was really, um, a, it was a difficult hurdle to overcome. And while we were able to recycle several hundred computers, we had a whole lot of participation. Um, other colleges even came. We would have liked to see it become bigger. And as our inaugural event, we felt it was a huge success, but we're hoping next year we get a whole lot more computers recycled. We've got a lot of uh, long-term projects I'm interested in knowing uh, how you evaluate uh, which ones you're going to sunset uh, after a period of being legacy projects. I'll take that. Um, every year we have a chief um, excellence officer and it's actually one of our positions and currently it is a female so what she does is she contacts all of our partnering organizations that we do projects with and she the question and answer time has expired. Judges, please join me in thanking Texas State University site team, San Marcos.